Hello and thank you for joining us on Sideline Story, your destination for sports news analysis and discussions. I am your host, Brandon Yates, and with me as always are all of my fantastic co-hosts, Yang Guang, Fu Yu, and Tian Yu. And we've got to talk about some football today. It's always good when we get back onto the football subject. I think that's, you know, (laughs) all of our favorite subjects. We could do this all day. (laughs) Yeah, we could do this all day. Um, And this is a particular topic that I think is going to potentially require all day. Um, because it's it, 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 it kind of has its ebbs and flows. But when we talk about Germany, the national team, um, you know, such an interesting history and kind of they've, they've gone through so many different periods of like dominance and disappointment. And it, it, it seems like regardless of where they stand at a given point in a season or in a year or even in a decade, there's constantly pressure and expectation on this team. And I think that a lot of it has to do with historical success mm. um, that the team has had, which dates ba- back to like almost the 1950s mm. um, and hasn't really dropped off totally um, since then. There have been some big drop-offs, um, but you know, I suppose you could even say in the last year or two, there's been some big drop-offs, but there's always this notion that the German team is a strong football team and have always been a strong football nation but Yang Guang just talking about um, what's been going on recently I guess they've performed relatively well um, in international friendlies recently I mean I think of the the result against France and the Netherlands again two very Mm. strong Mm. footballing nations Um, but do you do you agree that Germany have shown signs of recovery under coach Julian Nagelsmann recently Oh, I think so. Um, letting Nagusman take charge was a great move, I think. It marked the start of Germany's rebuilding, um, mm. even though it's only the beginning of this process. Uh, I see Nagusman's determination to switch this German squad to a more fast-paced, uh, energetic, and balanced team. I kind of like what it, this young coach has done to this team. It's, it's the Germany I think fans look forward to. Um, direct and efficient, no dragging, no back-and-forth passes, no hesitation and fear of losing the ball, which we saw a lot in the mm. Louvre era. Mm. Uh, at least um, with Nagelsmann, the German team now feels like a force that is ready to fight and take risks. Nagelsmann also made some changes to the German squad. One of the moves which I really appreciate is to put Yusua Kimmich to the right back. Yeah, yeah his actual position, not pulling a Pep Guardiola and in, uh, messing with people's <laughs> positions and you know, uh, you know, playing style. And I think that move of his from right back to central defensive midfield for Germany and for Bayern Munich, and not even defensive midfielder, like he, he's he's taken on. Well, he did take on like an almost attacking responsibility mm-hmm. for both yeah. of those teams, which. When you think of the high profile of uh, Munich and the German national team, how kind of crazy that is, because he is a defensive-minded player and he his best position is right back. Yeah. So, and and we've seen Pep Guardiola do this with uh, various other teams and players. I think of um, you know uh, at Manchester City, we've we've seen it with John Stones moving into midfield. We saw it with. Um, Jao Cancelo moving into midfield and and Cancelo has had his issues with Pep, Pep Guardiola in the media recently. Um, but yeah, I wonder if Pep Guardiola's move of putting Kimmich into midfield had a direct impact on Germany's recent misgivings. I wonder if, the, if German fans can blame Pep Guardiola for <laughs> their, their, uh, their drop in uh, performances for the national team. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it just makes sense. Playing one of your most experienced players in their in their best position Mm. i mean the fact that we're even talking about it now as something that nagelsman did i mean if 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 if, if i made my sister the 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 manager of the german national team one of the first moves that she would do is be like okay what's your favorite position you're one of the most experienced players okay we'll play you in that position (laughs) you know what i mean it's just like it's not even i don't even know if it's coaching prowess i think it's just logic yeah i think it's um consistent with fans Wishes, mm. and uh, also meantime, Nagelsmann reuses Tony Cruz uh, mm. to let him lead the midfield. This is definitely a decisive yeah. switch. Bit of an SOS call, I think, though, bringing him back into the national team because they didn't re- an S- like a save our souls move. So bringing bringing someone back as a, like an emergency decision, mm-hmm. as in like, well, we're struggling, we've got problems in midfield, let's bring a legend back, like yeah. they did with Zidane at, and France mm-hmm. uh, at the, I think it was, was it the 2006 World Cup? 
um, where he headbutted the Matarazzi. I don't remember. What, I think it was 2006. Yeah. But um, yeah, th- is it not something like that where, you know, obviously Cruz is one of the most de- decorated and successful German players at, at a club and national level of all time. Um, and I think it is good for this upcoming Euro 2024. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But it's definitely it's a it's a stopgap option. They they you know, and that is a little bit concerning potentially for Germany's future. But that being said, in a year where it's the Euros, you can't really be thinking about the future. You need to be you need to think about what results need to be gained right now. Mm, that's why I think um, Nagelsmann knows how to use players um, and uh, allocate the right roles for them. <coughs> um, even though Germany now has a rather smaller talent pool. Mm. Nagus meant to select players from. Mm. Um, but uh, this recovery is not complete yet, I think. Germany still needs to rely on some um, veterans or some key positions like, yeah. like Gundogan um, as the front midfielder with Thomas Müller as his substitute. But again, I guess it's not that much of an issue for what they are focusing on right now. And you'll have to hope that someone like uh, Nagelsmann or Nagelsmann or whatever his name is, <laughs> however it's pronounced, um, hopefully... You know, there are long-term plans, but I think uh, the coach's concern and the team's concern right now cannot be anything besides mm-hmm. the fact that they are hosting the Euros. Yeah. There's a huge tournament in front of them, and uh, they are the host. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they have to show the German fans they are still there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and that has to be the, the, the main focus, not the future, not the past, but mm-hmm. what's going on right now. Yeah. Um, so I think there are positive signs that Nagelsmann's Germany is bouncing back from the recent dismal form um, in major tournaments, but there's still a long way to go. Yeah, because it's very recent as well. I mean, I think of, um, you know, there were the wins against the Netherlands and France, but very recently they lost to Austria, they lost to Turkey, they drew mm. with Mexico. Um, so Even thankfully, in the, yeah, so thankfully mm. in the last couple of, I guess, weeks, things have gotten better for Germany. But this year hasn't been particularly great for Germany. And something that's also a little bit concerning, I think, at this point in terms of uh, Nagelsmann and his situation with the national team is that I think he's only under contract until after the Euros. And he has come out publicly and said that he wants to sign a new deal before the Euros get underway. And I'm assuming that's something that the German hierarchy haven't decided in terms of what they want to do yet because the Euros are just around the corner, but the the future of their their manager and the national team as a whole is is kind of uncertain but to have a manager in a role that's uncertain before a major tournament that's a little bit concerning and he has been linked with the vacant Liverpool job mm-hmm. he's been uh, loosely linked with the Manchester United job so I think that's also a bit of a, a, a concern for German fans or it should be at this point but I'm also assuming that um, the hierarchy at the German national team will also come out and announce something in the coming weeks or at least before Euro 2024. But Tianyu, what do you think about uh, Nagelsmann and his situation with the German team and just the situation with the German team overall right now, particularly heading into a Euro competition that they are hosting? Yeah, yeah. We have two fans of the German team (laughs) here. And I think you could tell the excitement from them when you're going to talk about these teams. Don't count me in. I'm not really. I'm a, I'm yeah. a fan of Bayern Munich, but I'm not a fan of the German national team anymore. Sorry. Anymore. <laughs> Where's yeah. the loyalty? Just because they're struggling? Come on now. My loyalty is with Team China. Ah, that, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Who just won a World Cup qualifier. Yeah. yeah. Awesome result. Awesome result. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I think we can all agree that this German team is a lot different than uh, what we saw before. I can still remember that in the Qatar World Cup, when we are watching games of the German team, it feels like suffering from constipation. They could always have the ball under their feet, but every time the ball enters the box, the players suddenly became at a loss for what to do next. And their games were filled with meaningless horizontal passes and devoid of efficiency. That could still be an issue now, though, because they're starting with um, that guy. I don't even know. The guy from Arsenal. The player that doesn't have a position but still costs like 70 million pounds. Havertz. Havertz, thank you. I think he's doing a lot better now. I know, but he's not a striker. Yeah. So that's that could yeah. also still be an issue for the, for the German national yeah. team going forward is that they might have all of these ex, you know exciting attacking players and, mm. and dominate possession and, and uh, play free-flowing football. Mm. But if they don't have someone to finish off those moves, that could be an issue. And yes, I agree. Havertz has gotten better and he seems to be coming more acclimatized to the center-forward role. Mm. But it's still not his position. And it's it's could mm. be something... 
similar to what we've seen with Kimmich in the past in yeah. terms of being a talented player that's playing out of position. Mm -hmm. That could be an issue for Germany when it gets to like knockout stages. I think it's gotten mm -hmm. them through at this point in time. But when you come up against the likes of France, England, Portugal, teams of that ilk that are really world class at quarterfinal, semifinal stages, having a stopgap up front like Havertz mm. could be an issue. But yeah, things I but yeah, things are getting better for Germany. Yeah, yeah. Uh anyway the the things are different now under the coach of uh, Nagelsmann, the playing style has changed a lot. Mm. Uh you can see more through balls, more running and more pressing among the players, like Yang Guang said, and more speed and vigor during the games. But do you see how all of that requires a finisher? Yeah. So that's the thing. Like they're playing all of this attacking football and they're creating chances and mm. all of that requires an out and out center forward. Let's see. I really think that German fans wish that Harry Kane was <laughs> yeah, uh, they was yeah. Harry Kane. Yeah. 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 Actually during their last two friendlies, sometimes I find myself looking for Harry Kane. <laughs> Bayern fans probably when he scores, they like have a massive smile on their face and when they realize he's not German they kind of deflate again. <laughs> Uh, besides all the opening game uh, go in the game between Germany and France was fabulous. Mm. It was it was a clear sign of what this team pursues right now: efficiency and simp uh, simplicity. And also, can uh, we say all of that after one game, though? You know what I mean. That's the thing. Like they've shown signs mm. of improvement, but it's been like two games. But two mm. games, yeah. Say, say, still say a lot for yeah. But I mean, you can also team. you can also argue that mm. teams like the Netherlands and France that are highly experienced and have qualified for the Euros quite well in advance, that maybe they were using those games against Germany to try a, different yeah, things. Yeah, as a trials and errors. Yeah, yeah, so I don't think... I think German fans can be optimistic, mm. but I don't think they can look yeah. at those games as any defining factor yeah. in terms of determining the progress that Germany has made in the last year. Mm. But I mean progress in in the last couple of weeks I mean it's great. It's always you know it's it's great to build confidence and um confidence going into a major tournament I think is a huge determining factor particularly when you're trying to separate the top teams. Mm. I think their mental state can really have an impact on how far they can go. So I'm sure me Germans Germany's mental state right now in terms of what's going throughout the squad is probably pretty good. But I still think that there are cracks mm. um that could potentially be problematic going into a major tournament like euro 2024 uh for you what do you think uh yeah the friendlies they were like you said they're not defining but they are still and they're friendlies at the end yes, of the day yeah and they're very still uh uh, enjoyable to watch yeah. and still and very impressive I mean those regardless of results, what kind of state yeah, yeah definitely. The, regardless of whatever states mentally or tactically the Netherlands or France were in to beat both of those teams is a great mm. achievement yeah yeah and it's incredible that uh, they bounced back from their string of mm. defeats and struggles against that weak suffered. opposition too yes. no disrespect to those teams that we mentioned earlier but I mean Germany should be putting those teams away no problem historically mm -hmm. yeah and and I know we're going to get into Tony Cruz but I'm uh, very excited to see him return to the national team yeah. and uh, it seems like his return puts every player to their position. It's like suddenly everyone knows where they should be and mm -hmm. what they should do. Maybe that's um, been a part of Kimmich returning to right back as well as the return of Tony Cruz. Mm. Because he is just a midfielder. I mean, he's probably been the best central midfielder or at least one of the best CMs in the world over the last decade. Mm. Yeah, so it's like Julian Nagelsmann made the right decision or yeah. copied the right decision from Pep Guardiola. Or was and told just what to do. Maybe the hierarchy were like, listen, bring Cruz back, put... Uh, 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 Kimmich. Kimmich back at back into right back. <laughs> Is he playing right back for Bayern at the moment? Yeah. Okay. So that's also. Mm. Um, yeah, it, it seems like it was a relatively long term sense, plan. No. Mm. Well, yeah. I, I don't. I don't know if it's the long term plan for his entire career, but maybe some sort of deci decision was made between Bayern and um, the national team to, particularly in the Euro twenty twenty four year to return Kimmich to right back because maybe both teams were aware that Cruz was going to come back or at least they were going to try and get him to come back and they've succeeded in doing mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and regardless if it's a, a position that Kimmich wants to be in, it's uh, a mm. job that he's been familiar with at mm. least. Um, and uh, so everyone with all their complaints recently about the Mannschaft and Nagelsmann may have got it wrong. Um, if... Uh, it may not be a problem of 
decision making or、uh, a a bad a, a players having a bad day. It could be. Uh, the team lacking a cen- central figure that they can rely on,、mm. and and I can't think of anyone better to rely on than Tony Cruz. Honestly, yes, no matter which, what stage of his career he's in, which is why his return is so timely. Yeah,、uh, and、uh, another another problem I think is that it's they're probably、early. holding his kids ransom. I'm just saying, come back for the national team, otherwise, you know, because I don't, I don't know how eager he was to come back, but I think, I mean, it kind of all lines up because you know he is German, he wants success for the German national team, and Germany is hosting the tournament, so I guess they had the、um, whoever was in charge of trying to bring him back. I think they had a lot of bargaining chips、uh, mm-hmm. to bring Cruz back because I think if it was just a random year, I don't think they would have been able to bring him back. Yes, But because it's a Euro year or a World Cup year or whatever it may be, that's a a strong、yeah. pulling force, especially when it's being hosted by, you know, your country. There must have been a lot of hard convincing behind it because when、mm. he left the national team, he was really determined, and、mm. until now he's never looked back.、Mm. So,、uh, but Tony Cruz also can have his、uh, limitations. We'll get into that early.、Mm. But、uh, I I think at and this- again could be an issue in the latter stages of the tournament. That that's、yes. assuming that Germany even gets through the group stage because their group、mm. is quite tricky.、Mm. Yeah, and but coming back to this question,、yeah. uh, right now I think it's still too early to say that this is the beginning of a recovery for this German squad、mm. uh, because first of all there is only one Tony Cruz and you don't know how long he can commit to the national duties and also、uh, I no, doubt he'll go beyond the Euros. I think it. I think he's literally、mm. just back for the Euros. Yeah, yeah, my idea exactly.、Mm. Uh, and Uh, how, uh, we there's also doubt about how much he can help when the games really get serious, like in official games.、Uh, but the positive, I, I still th- I think if he's fully fit, I think that he can still have a huge impact on any game that he plays in. But、yes. keeping him fit、mm. is another factor. And also, is he the type of player that can play in ninety minutes at the highest level right、mm. now? Not so sure. And also, if something does happen to him, or if he does need to be taken off and rested. I can't think of many options that they have to、uh, to fill in for him.、Mm. Yeah, and、uh, I also think he sometimes will need a lot of support. Like、mm. he he can defend the side. Uh, on all on, on, on in all areas. Well,、mm. yeah, he yeah. Uh, they can't、uh, expect him to be the box to box midfielder that I think they might want him to be. Because I no, think no, he's not that type of player. Yeah, but but it seems like, judging from recent starting lineups and. Uh, tactical formations from the national team. They generally play with Cruz、uh, uh, and this other.、Oh, I can't think of the other guy's name. Sorry, give me a second.、Um, Havertz. No, no, no.、Uh, Andrich, the Leverkusen yeah, yeah, player. Yeah. They play with just the two of them in midfield, which I think kind of exposes Cruz in particular because if he loses the ball or needs to track back, there's only one player to cover him. Which I think、mm. could be problematic. That I mean. That being said, Germany do have strong、uh, and experienced centre backs in Rudiger and Jonathan Tarr. But、mm. I think that they, the expectations that they might be placing on someone like Cruz, in terms of fulfilling multiple roles, could be a little bit too much for him at this point in his career. But one advantage that Cruz has in that regard is that he doesn't get nervous. Yeah, that's according、mm. to himself. He's seen it all. I mean. <laughs> He's seen it all. He's won it all. He's experienced it all. He's played in the biggest games in the world, and yeah, I, and, and I, I kind of believe that from what he said as well. Because I get this weird vibe from him. I, I don't know if it's like a, a a translation thing or like a, a misunderstanding thing. But whenever he speaks, he really doesn't seem phased by anything or anyone.、Mm. He seems to have like one emotion, <laughs> and he responds to any questions or statements the same way. He's like almost ro- robotic in a sense. Mm-hmm. And I think that that kind of mentality can be good for someone like him, and it's clearly brought him a lot of success at a club level and a national level. And I, I believe him. I don't think anything phases him.、Um, so he、uh, nervousness definitely won't be an issue、mm. at this tournament, <laughs> or at least he won't show it, because I've never ever seen Cruz look phased、mm. or、um, you know,、uh, kind of off off center、mm. um, in any game or in any press conference or or anything like that. Everything that he Does or says seems to be like predetermined、um, and planned.、Yeah. Typical German. I was about to say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you know what I mean. But I mean, I've, I've just never. Where's where's someone like、um, Muller 
seems to kind of say what's on his mind and and and, and is kind of unfiltered. Very dramatic. Yeah, and and quite funny too. Like yes, he's got quite he a good sense of humor. Whereas Cruz is very kind of like direct and straight and you know doesn't mess around, which is kind of what they need from him. That's what the German team needs right now. Yeah. Is yes. a no nonsense, experienced. Hmm. Performer. Yeah. yeah, the German team going back to being a German team. <laughs> they don't need the, the Germans funny going guy. back to being German. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's a quality that may work for him, but mm. uh, for a lot of younger players, they may not have reached this stage. But the good good news is that the young players are stepping up from mm. these two friendlies. Mm. We see the likes of uh, Jamal Musiala and mm. uh, what, what's his first? Fertz. Florian. Florian Wirtz. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, and even Mittelstadt. He, uh, although he is not as young, he also produced some surprises for us. Um, so mm. these And these Jonathan players... Tal's return and, you know, mm. uh, 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 yeah, I mean, yeah, there are young players in key positions, but there's also been players that have been in and around the German national setup that are mm. all of a sudden performing incredibly well for the likes of Leverkusen and Bayern mm. and are now firm starters in that German uh, yes. national team. And that seems to have benefited them greatly yes, as well. That's a very They've got a strong point. spine. Yes, yes. I, I like that you mentioned both Leverkusen and Bayern Munich yeah. at the same time. Another uh, sign that I noticed is that, uh, take uh, Wels as an example, he is... Uh, such an important player in the friendlies recently mm. and he's also been deeply involved and contributed a lot to Leverkusen's surprising run this pretty season. phenomenal at his in age too Liga. considering how much yes. responsibility he's taken on for his club and his national team yes which is quite unconventional because usually the spine of the national team are us- are players from Bayern Munich and yeah. this, this season this year ahead There's of none. The, ahead of this major competition uh, yeah. A Leverkusen player is yeah. Just or like, or the... I mean, like literally in that in that uh, national team spine, there's there's not a single Bayern player. I mean, there's Ter Stegen, mm-hmm. there's Tau, there's uh, Kroos, there's um, and like Wurz and mm-hmm. uh, and Gundogan. There's mm-hmm. there's no Bayern players in the in in that key yeah, area. I, I mean, there are still Bayern standouts in the in the national team, but it seems like Bayern is having less of an impact also on the national team that they have in Dortmund. the past. Yeah, Dortmund, Dortmund is also. Which, yeah, I, I think is a signal that a new era may be mm. beginning in German football, mm. where uh, Bayern Munich is not the sole dominating yes. club anymore. Yeah. I still think is fading. Yeah, I still think there's a lot of question marks there. I think there's positive signs for Germany heading into the Euros, but beyond the Euros... I think there's still question marks over certain players, the manager. So it'll be interesting to see how they perform at the Euros and what the futures hold for certain players and, of course, the manager as well. Mm. But we may get some of those answers in the coming weeks. But um, Yang Guang, Fuyu's already touched on a couple of young players like uh, Musiala and uh, um, Florian Wirtz. Um, But do you think the German squad is on the same level as the likes of England and France? And are those young talents going to be enough to lead Germany, not just at the Euros, but beyond? Um, I think the Germans should feel lucky that they have Wurz and uh, Musiala, Mm. um, two Mm. talented hopefuls on the team. Otherwise, they don't really have shining youngsters right now. Mm. Uh, Wurz is definitely growing into a reliable attacker that Germany can build their offense around. Yeah, and, and one of the most sought-after young players in the world. Mm, yeah. His his vision, his speed, dribbling skills, ex- exceptional. Yeah. And um, I echo um, what Fu Yu said earlier, and I hear this a lot from Chinese fans lately. Um, the German national team depends on Bayern Munich in peak time, but depends more on Leverkusen when now. it's at bottom. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, like historically. Yeah. Right. Uh, in 2002, when Germany also hit a low point, it was Michael Ballack, Oliver Neuer, yep. uh, Neuwehr, um, Bernard Schneider carrying the team forward. Jeez, I feel old now when I hear those <laughs> names. I remember, the, I remember those players so clearly. Yeah, they all came from Leverkusen yeah. uh, then. Uh, now Leverkusen's Wurz, Jonathan Tarr, Robert Andrich... Um, continue this tradition to take and in big key ris- positions, man. Yeah, They're really in key positions. Yeah, big responsibilities yeah. for the national team. They represent a different force, a more lively force than the Bayern players right now. Mm. But I have to rain on the Germans' seemingly promising parade here because top teams like England now owns 
far more young assets. Yeah, I mean, a lot of animal. injuries right now. England, are, um, they've got a crazy amount of injuries and hopefully, for, well, for their sake, that they can get that sorted out before the Euros. But I mean, just in, in terms of uh, looking at the squad, let's say there were no injuries in the squad. Mm-mm. The depth and young talent that yeah, England has crazy. coming through is probably the strongest in the world. Yeah. So um, England has established, um, I mean, the England young players have est- established instant combat powers to fight for the trophy. Mm. Um, Germany needs to cultivate more Wurz and Musiala with a talent booming to go through this transitional period and finally build a mature competitive team. Mm. I think mm. with this kind of setup and squad and confidence that they've got right now, again, I think they... If things fall their way, they could potentially have a strong running at Euro 2024. I can see them doing better than uh, non-German fans expect. But I think after that tournament, that rebuilding phase is probably going to be more important for Germany than I think even their perform. I mean, assuming they don't win Euro 2024, I think that's going to be more important than whatever they achieve at Euro 2024 because there are so many question marks and aging players and so they can kind of get together something that's kind of a a mishmash of um, key solutions together for Euro 2020, uh, 2020, 2024. (laughs) But beyond that, there's still lots of questions. Um, But yeah, Tanya, do you think that Germany have enough talent to compete with some of these powerhouses like England, like France, like Portugal? Yeah, uh, well, I think uh, one of the things that Nagelsmann is doing, <coughs> is doing great about it, this team is his willingness to field young players, like you have mentioned. Mm. Uh, and it's just two, though. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, it's <laughs> really, it's just two guys. I mean, the rest of the... And also, if one of them gets injured, their, their depth <laughs> on the bench does not look strong at all. Mm. Um, and, their, and their starting lineup, there's question marks at striker, which I think at a tournament like Euro 2024 is a pretty damn big question mark to have. But yeah, talking about just talking about the, the, the recent results, the, yeah. the, gaining two solid wings over France and the Netherlands, I think no one can underestimate this, this, this team right now. Okay. Even though it is still friendlies, I think... <laughs> you're not convinced. I'm not yeah, convinced you're at all. I'm impressed, but I'm not convinced. Not yeah, you're going to say it's for the trials and errors. The intensity of the games are still there. And the, the Netherlands have been doing incredibly well in terms of the defense if you really watch the game. And yet the German teams could still s- score two goals over them. In a friendly. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> okay, but still. No, no, but, but it, it did, like I said, it also, it, like it's, it is admirable, mm. those results, but meaningless. It's what, it, it's, but it's what they need right now. Yeah, they need the confidence booster, right? The, yeah. The, the, the his, yeah, the, the recent... Um, defeats like yeah. like for you said it's it's really inspiring and that's what they need right now i think it's also some validation for the direction that they're going in for mm. euros so even though you might not have found france or the netherlands playing at 100 percent or playing the the styles and the formations that they're planning to play at euro 2024 i think it definitely gives whatever nagelsman and his coaching staff are doing validation in terms of okay we're moving in the right direction mm. and potentially we could get something going at euro yeah. 2024 mm. yeah um for you oh, you don't want to do question no, three no, yeah? no not this okay. one um okay let's move into the into the final question then um look we've we've yang kwang we've uh, talked about a couple of aspects um in terms of germany's aspirations for euro 2024 and what the future might hold for them but I think German fans and the team overall will only be focusing on Euro 2024 right now. So when we look at that tournament and this team and the coaching setup, how good of or not good of a chance do Germany have of getting together some sort of run um, at their own tournament that they're hosting? And how far can you potentially see them going? Okay. Um, before Tony Cruz was called up, I would say they have no chance. Yeah. To <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> how, but I mean, it, it, it shows how much respect Cruz deserves because one mm. player coming back has all of a sudden given Germany some hope. Yeah. And that's incredible considering the strength of the German uh, team historically as well. The fact that one player can come back and have such an impact, it puts him in the same category as Zidane. Yeah, I will um, touch more on Tony Cruz. I think Cruz plays the role of firefighter here in the German national team yeah, SOS, because Germany yeah. is in desperate need for a midfield commander who can comb mm. 
their attack.、Mm. Uh, I mean, Kimmich used to play this role, but、um, I guess Nagelsmann, as well as, as, well as Thomas Tuchel with Bayern Munich and us fans, they finally seen logic. Yeah, we all figured he's not qualified. So,、no. so it's like a company、um, which mistakenly fired、um, a very good employee, and years later they、mm. figured figured they fired the wrong person. And、oh, like when Apple brought back、uh, <laughs> what's his name. Altman, Sam Altman. No, no, like、oh, the main、oh, guy,、moves. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, yeah, because he <laughs> left and came back. Yeah, yeah. And they dialed his number.、Um, dear Tony,、um, we, we made a huge mistake. No, no I told you what happened. They held his kids hostage, <laughs> and that's still currently what's going on. We haven't got footage or confirmation of that yet, but that's my assumption. I, I would say <laughs> the German hierarchy would say、um, said. Um, dear Tony, we made a huge mistake by letting you go, and、uh, we should never do this.、Yeah. Um, now we need you. Everyone misses you. Can you please come back? And Tony on the other side would be like,、uh, "I know. I've been expecting this call for years.、Um, see you on Monday." Yeah, to be. I mean, that being said, I don't know how badly Cruz wanted to return. I think that the national team wanted him back more than he wanted to return. That's my. That's, that's my sense. But if you、yeah. think about. Uh, think about it, Tony Cruz. One thing that Tony Cruz hasn't won is the、mm. Euro, European Championship. Yeah, so they definitely did. Like I said earlier, they definitely had good bargaining tools.、Mm. Um, so you probably find that convincing him to come back probably required less effort, considering the situation that's presented itself. As in, it's a Euro、mm. year. Cruz has never won the Euros, and it's also being hosted by Germany.、Yeah. Like all of the pieces have fallen into place. By the way,、um, Tony Cruz has a very cool nickname in China. It's um, um, Tony the Barber. Has、um, <laughs> it got to do with his the fact、uh, one, that he's kept the same haircut for like ten years? <laughs> yeah, one because most. Um, barbers in China would call、Nicknamed. themselves Tony.、Yeah. I don't know、oh. why. But barbers、uh, call themselves Tony. Yeah. yeah.、Oh. <laughs> you、and、go into a random barber shop, you would you would see all Tony. a guy <laughs> named Tony. Really? In China, in Beijing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Favorite、uh, name by barbers. Yeah,、here. it's so random. <laughs> and yeah, Cruz. Tony has basically replaced the word. For barbers、yeah. in, <laughs> in China, people, yeah. yeah. If someone needs to get a haircut, they'll say, "I, I need to go see my Tony." <laughs> I wonder where that comes from. That's so bizarre. <laughs> yeah. And meantime, Cruz is very careful of his Hair, hairstyle、yeah. on the pitch. <laughs> And secondly,、um, Cruz can always、um, shape up a team's attack, just、yeah. like how a barber. And just the overall、barber. setup as well. Yeah. I mean, literally, he is in a position and has the ability. To determine games, I think honestly,、mm, yeah. even even at this level and even at this stage in his career, yeah, like a barber,、um, how a barber gives a fine haircut, haircut to right, a right, yeah. But also, I think just because of historically Cruz's role at Real Madrid, you know, obviously the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo and Benzema were stealing the headlines, but、uh, at, but I think a lot of their success also had to do with that midfield trio of Casemiro. Modric and Cruz, and Cruz was a huge part of that for、mm. a long period of time. And、yeah. he still is. He's still、yeah. very precise and sharp. Absolutely, yeah. He's still keeping Real Madrid in the、Game、race、team. for La Liga titles and even in the Champions League. So,、um, I think Cruz's return has been huge for Germany.、Mm. So, do you think that he gives them extra energy? But I mean, does he give them a shot of going winning it as as far as going to maybe the semi-finals or the final, or even lifting the trophy? I think the semi-final would be. The best,、um, I think so too. Picture they can imagine, yeah, the, right now. Tian Yu, are Germany going past the semis? I would say it looks really promising. Yeah, like, like beyond the semis. Yeah, you are more、oh. optimistic than a German fan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have to say. When you look at France and England and Portugal, I mean, whew, those teams are insane. So、this、I would be very impressed if Germany got by any of those teams. Belgium also. Th- this、mm. is probably the last. Chance for their golden generation to win something. I mean, they have the motivation, they have the energy.、Uh, from what、But、I've seen right now, <laughs> <laughs> in the friendlies, at least, I would say it's, things are looking. About the friendlies, things are looking really bright. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are looking good right now. But、mm. it's also like, you know,、um, if Max Verstappen was winning races against <laughs> go karts, things are also looking really good for him. But he's not testing himself against the best. You know what I mean? So that being said. Germany have tested themselves against some of the best 
mm. recently. The fi- yeah, the test, the but real in, test. But is in still- but in what kind of mental state and in mm. what kind of efforts were they really giving? We'll never know. We'll yeah. only see it at yeah, Euro yeah, twenty twenty four, right? Yeah. For you, what do you yeah. think about Germany's chances? You are all more optimistic than I. <laughs> <laughs> I think this German squad will at least do better than their finish at the last tournament. Which was the group stage? Yeah, uh, this, it just this got time, eliminated. Think, yeah, yeah, I think they'll at least survive the group stage and probably quarterfinals is the final yeah. that they can reach look Let's i think see. yeah i mean look i think that they can do well they're highly experienced highly decorated as a national team and like we've said they've got top performing players in clubs in germany that are doing well right now i.e bayern and particularly leverkusen as well um but that being said germany have disappointed on home soil um mm. in past uh, major tournaments six yeah so 2006 and um but I mean, that being said, if you go way back to like 1974, they won the World Cup on their home soil and they have done well. I think they won, was it the 1988 Euros, I think, were also in Germany. So historically, they have, like, when I say historically, I mean really historically, way back, they've done well on home soil. <laughs> but recently, I think um, the last Euros that they hosted, I think they finished third. And I've, and they finished third in 2006 at the World Cup, right? So mm. they... There has been instances where there was a lot of expectation on the national team where they, I wouldn't say, I mean, I wouldn't say a third place finish is a disappointment, but it's, or, you know, it's anything to be ashamed of, but it's, you know, it's not what was expected of them. So it'll be interesting to see how they handle that pressure of being at home. Um, And again, I still think that a lack of a striker will affect them if they do somehow manage to get past the quarterfinals and the semifinals. Um, but that being said, on home soil, Tony Cruz is back. They've got some exciting youngsters. I think things are looking more positive now for Germany mm. in recent weeks mm. than they have done in the last year or so. So I think this Euros is going to be very, very exciting indeed uh, for German fans and just for fans of football in general because there are just so many teams that could potentially go on um, all the way and lift that trophy. But that is all we have time for on this week's episode of Sideline Story. Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, we will be back next week with our latest topic and we'll see you then. This is CGTN Radio. Hear the difference.